our desire, every one of us. Hallelujah. Thank God. That's God. That spirit wants us off. Yeah. So we yeah. walk with it. That's right. This will fly out. Fly out. Yeah. Well, I've been through the fire. I've been through the floor. Found the sky. Just a little more. I've had a reason. Just a little more. If you're looking for smoke. Brother, I got it, but I ain't going to go, ain't going to the Oh, oh, the God of us, he rides on the wind, I see him come through, I have a good day, he's my salvation, I'm going to go, yeah, stay back to the show, I'm going to go. Is there nothing to heal that? 
And uh, their health just not recovered. And I, I, I want to talk to you about this. You know, the Bible says the harvest is past, the summer's ended, and we're not saved. And, and the tragedy of so many lives is that we are, we're going to get saved. Uh, we're going to get right with God. We're going to someday, before we die, we're going to get it right. But you know, the tragedy is there's a lot of people that plan to get saved at the 11th hour who die at 1030. The Bible tells us that it's appointed unto man, Hebrews 9, 27. It's appointed unto man once to die, yeah. and after this, the judgment. Every single individual right. in this room today, every individual that lives in this manor house, and all across this world, will one day face the God of heaven. Right. Now, I don't care what religion they say they are. I don't care what church they go to or don't go to. It will not change the Bible. Every last one of us has got an appointment with destiny. We've got an appointment with the God of heaven. And we're going to answer on that day what we have done with Jesus Christ. You know, we right. look back at life. I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not a young man anymore. Not an old man. I'm just getting older. I'm not an old man yet. I'm just getting older. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, you, you, you reach my age and our age is here. And we look back at life and we say, you know, what, what did I accomplish? What did I do? Did, did, I, did I lay any markers? Did I do anything? Did, did I actually leave behind the trail? Did I actually do anything? Well, that's all good and fine and great. And I don't know your lives. I don't know what you've done or haven't done. But let me tell you something. The only thing that's going to matter is not how much money you've got in the bank, what kind of car that you're driving, where that you're living. The only thing that's going to matter is what you have done with Jesus Christ. You know, right. I had asked the crowd that day, and when they were hollering for Barabbas, he said, what then, what then will I do, with, what, what, I'm, what I'm going to do with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Right. And I call that life's most important question, what will you do with Jesus Christ? Because when you get to the judgment of all I mean, God, the other day, and Christ is standing there with the nail prints in his hand, and then the spot and the side where they're standing, and I, I mean, there's still stars on his brow when they put the thorns and scars in the feet of the Bible and even mix that because he said, Lord, ask them a day, where did you get these stars? Where did they come from? And he keeps us said, I'm going to tell them, I've got them in the house, my friend. So I believe they're going to be there in heaven. I believe the stale, strong hands of Christ will be there. And here's going to be the question that God's going to ask every one of us, what did you do with my son? He came to earth. He died on a cross. He gave his life a ransom for you. He took your penalty. He took your punishment. He took your sin. He took your death. He took your destruction. He took all of the penalties that were against you and bore them on the cross and died for you. And what did you do with him? Uh -oh. That's the only thing that's going to right. That's the only thing that's going to matter. Are you saved? Right. Have you been washed in the blood? I, do, well, I, I belong to that. Listen, forget your church denomination. What have you done with Jesus? Have you been there? There's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way. Right. I am the truth. Yes. And I am the life. There's only one God that can get you there. It's the Bible. It's God's Word. This right. is God's revelation of mankind. This is the road map. So I don't know how to get there. God cleared your road map. I don't know how to do it. God gave you instructions. Repent. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess your sins. Repent of your sins. You've got to confess. Repent means to forsake. You've got to confess. You've got to forsake. He said, I'll make you a new creature. Amen. Oh, yeah. He said to Nicodemus, who was a ruler of the Jews. He was a religious man, a religious man. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. Oh, I can't believe you said that to me. Don't you know who I am? I'm a ruler of the Jews. I've memorized the first five books of the Bible. I don't care if you know the Bible. I don't care if you've been baptized in every creek and pond and to the temples and the fish of your social security number. If you haven't been born again, if you have not been washed in the blood, you're not going to go to God's hell. Right? Amen. That's right. Woo! Let's go. Yes. All right, Jake Brown, we're telling how I belong to this church for 45 years. Big one. I know one old lady said the total preacher said I sat on this pew and my mother sat on this pew and my grandmother sat on this pew and he said, Lady, I've got one thing to say to you, pew on you. <laughs> it don't make no difference what pew you sat on, whose hand you shook, how many baptisms you've been baptized in, how many churches you belong to, how many look you belong to Jesus. That's you right. belong to the Christ, having been washed in the blood. Is your name inscribed in the book of life? That's the only thing that's going to matter. There's your name written there. The Bible talks about when we get there. The book 
books are going to be open, right? Come on. And it said there's another book, and it's called the book of life. Okay. And whosoever's name was not written therein was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You better listen. Don't worry about it. If your name is on the registry of your local church, worry about it. If your name was written in the Lamb's book of life, because if it's not in their neighbor, you're going to be cast into an everlasting torment. Say, what well, I hope for the victim there. You better get better than that. You better know for sure before you leave here today that you're ready to be God. And make sure before I walk down this building that I do God. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo. Well, you know, preacher, you know, you're just a little radical. You know what radical means? Thoroughly convinced. And you're totally right. I am a radical. I'm thoroughly convinced that you're definitely saved. I'm yes. thoroughly convinced that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm thoroughly convinced that you've got to be washed in the blood if you're going to go to God's heaven. I'm a radical. I'm thoroughly convinced. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I go to the world. Devil chewed on good chew today, but I'm with riches. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, You've got to be, you got to be born again. You've got to be washed in the blood. You got to get things right with the master. Hallelujah. Amen. You got to come by the cross. Amen. Jesus said, "I'm the door to the sheepfold." Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He said, "Any man that seeks to come in any other way is as a thief and a robber." Hallelujah. Oh, but well, there's many ways that they all lead to God. Hogwash. There's only one road. It's the road stained by the shed blood of the Son of God. Yeah. It takes you out the Via Della Rosa. It takes you to the blood stained tracks of the Master. It leads you out to Mount Calvary where the Son of God died and his blood set in the lines of the Golgotha. That's the only path. That's the only road. That's the only door that will take you to heaven. Right? Oh, and I got that. Amen. I said, I've got to make it and you've got to make it. Yes. We can't afford to fool around. We can't afford to hope and pray and think of this. Come on. There is a bomb of guilt. There, there, there is a healing. There is something that heals minds. There's something that heals broken bodies. There's something that breaks the chains of sin. There's something that can heal the drug addict and the drunk and the heart and the broken and the torn and the torment. There's something that heals them. Yeah. That's Christ, the Son of the living God. That's right. Never seen the world so broken. I've never seen the world so confused. I've never seen our nation in such turmoil. Never seen it. Amen. They're all trying to find a solution. Well, I, I've got the solution. Amen. Make Jesus Christ the Son of the Most High God. Amen. Put him up as the Lord and King of this nation. Because the Bible said sin is a reproach. Righteousness, righteousness exalts the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. And when we took prayer and Bible reading out of the schools, Hello. Yeah. And the Ten Commandments out of schools and off the courthouse walls. Are you still here? Come on now. And when we, we've tried to banish Jesus, it, it, it's so crazy. Yeah. We want to celebrate Christmas and not celebrate Christ. Amen. Well, figure that out if you can. Hey, what's your name, sir? Mark. We'll have a birthday party for Mark. Now, we're not going to mention Mark. We're not going to bring Mark any presents. No. We're not going to say anything. But we're going to celebrate his birthday. Come on here. My God, if we're going to celebrate Mark's birthday, we're going to say, we're going to say happy birthday to Mark. We're going to bring presents to Mark. We're going to talk about Mark. My brother, when Christmas comes, I'm going to celebrate Jesus, the Son of the Most High God. It's his birthday, and I'm going to celebrate it. And the world said, we don't want to hear anything about it. We're going to put an Xmas. We're going to cross out the Christ. And cross it all we want to. He'll still be the Son of God. He's still going to be the Master. He's still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's still the Son of God. He's still the Son of Righteousness, arising with healing in His wings. He's still Jehovah Jireh, the God that sees and provides. He's still Jehovah Shalom, the God our peace. He's still Jehovah Nisha, the Lord our man. Oh, glory. He's still Jehovah Rafika, the Lord of healing. They can't take His name. They can't change His power. They can't change Him. He's still God. Hallelujah. They can't pull him down from the heavens. They can't drag him down off the stars. They can't pull him off his throne. How do you understand, you understand, folks, that what we live in is just the just just what we call the first heaven. There's seven heavens above this, and he's in the seventh heaven. They haven't got out of this one yet. They're, they're, they're trying to figure out how to get to Mars, and he's in the seventh heaven. My God, they don't have any ships to take it. Hallelujah. He's the God of heaven. The Bible said he that sets upon the circle of the earth shall laugh. He's going to laugh. 
They got all this junk they're trying to do, all this garbage they're trying to change and trying to change the definition definition of marriage and the little children being born and you know you, you, uh, uh, can you imagine? I mean, definitely this crazy doctor or something. Uh, this child was born. Of course, I think all of us here old enough to know the difference. What boys and girls look like. Amen. Hey, how many of you have children? Anybody have children? You ladies you have children? Yes. You, you know the difference between a man and a girl. You know how you get out of the boy and girl. Right. Like, I'm spill. Right. Yeah. So this, this doctor uh, prescribed this child for what it was. What it was. Uh, what its anatomy was. And I think someone they sued the doctor because he misnamed their child. Come on. Right now, come on here. Am I, am I nuts? Here's something off my mind. Come on here. I'm okay. Well, the guy made male and female. They have all the gay prides they want, all the LBGT and all that other crazy nonsense. I'm going to stick with God's word. I'm going to say, I'm going to preach what God said. I'm going to stay on the word of God. The Bible said that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And I want to urge every one of us here to make sure we're ready, make sure we're right, make sure we're saved, make sure our name's in the book of life. And if it's not, you can get saved right now. You can get ready right now. The grace of God will save you right here and right now. You can leave this world yeah, knowing that you have passed from death of the life yeah. and that your name has been inscribed right. in the book of life. Amen. Oh, listen. Don't be, listen, don't be like this writer. Don't be like this writer. Summer's past, harvest is in it. I never got saved. Death snuck up on me. It got me. I wasn't ready for it. And it grabbed me. Listen, you better get ready because none of us know the day or the hour. We're, none of us know the moment. God's going to call the number. None of us know when we're going to face God. But we better be ready to face Him. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I tell you what I do know. I do know who holds my tomorrow. And that's Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Heavenly Father, thank you today for the wonderful Word of God. For the attentive audience, God, I pray that you touch our hearts. If there's anyone here that's not saved, anyone here that's not ready to go to hell.